Good afternoon. Um, my name is Dominic Lang, and um, on behalf of NORSAR, uh, I would like to introduce you to uh, Work Package 6, which is basically um, the conceptualization of the liquefaction mitigation planning software. So I do that on behalf of my colleagues, uh, Abdegani Meslem, Conrad Lindholm, and I want to also um, mention our colleague from the University of Alicante in Spain, Sergio Molina, with whom we, we have developed our core software that we will also use as the basis for this project um, for developing this uh, liquefaction software. Uh, before I begin, um, let me just um, thank uh, Emilia Romana for, for hosting us here. Um, it is already after four, and I see so many people, so you must be really interested. This is great to see. Believe me, when we are coming from, from Northern Europe, uh, Norway is not very high in seismicity, so uh, it would probably never be possible to host an event like this with so many interesting people. So thank you for that. And the other thing, is, of course, what I should not forget is um, you have uh, um, experienced a very terrible event end of August uh, in central Italy, and uh, let us uh, my colleagues and myself uh, um, assure you our deepest uh, condolences for, for the loss of almost 300 people uh, during this tragic event. So this event uh, again showed, we have probably not seen much liquefaction in death, but it shows um, how important this, this work, um, dealing with earthquakes and, and uh, making, raising awareness about this, this natural hazard is. So um, let me just start with what is the main aim of, of Work Package 6. We want to design and develop an easy-to-use software toolbox, integrating knowledge and methodologies of uh, most of the other work packages. So that brings us in a very unique situation because um, we are basically the one who kick others of delivering results because we really need these results in in conceptualizing and, and forming our, our software toolbox, which will basically be a tangible uh, product of this, of this project, and uh, which we then uh, want to, of course, after the, the closing of this uh, project, want to, to disseminate and also want to see that this is used in other parts of the world, not only within the European Union. It will, of course, also, um, uh, there is a need of, of calibrating this, this toolbox. Uh, there are work package seven, which will be presented after myself, where uh, um, within the case studies, there is some validation and also future uh, seismic design common recommendations, which will basically also go back and forth into the software. And then at the end, the software and also work package seven should basically support, support and provide guidance for uh, technical and non-technical stakeholders and decision makers in their planning process. So the, the software tool, toolbox should basically be used to provide engineering guidance for civil engineers, practicing engineers during the building design and implementation, and it should be also easily understood by non-technical decision makers. For example, uh, people who are sitting in the municipalities and who are really at the end uh, taking the final decision. You can see here just some, some screen dumps how we, we foresee that the, the graphical user interface of this software should look alike. It should be very stepwise with, with uh, spreadsheets based, step-by-step, uh, um, -step including a, a, a geographic information system and where all these simple steps towards the risk mitigation, the risk uh, assessment, shall be, um, be done subsequently. So the software toolbox should be able to predict the likely consequences of earthquake-induced liquefaction damage to the most vulnerable regions of, in Europe. So we have, in fact, there is a, a recent study by a guy uh, at UCL in, in London a master's student who has done a, a significant amount of work of collecting data where liquefaction basically has happened in the past and uh, which sites in Europe are basically uh, uh, susceptible to, to suffer liquefaction. So there is definitely a need also within the European Union to, to get deeper into this uh, important topic. 
And at the end, the software toolbox shall basically uh, contribute in reducing or mitigating even the impacts of, of earthquake-induced liquefaction. So these uh, two pictures I did myself uh, a couple of years ago after the 1999 Turkey earthquake, uh, where you could uh, see also widespread liquefaction damage in, in some parts uh, uh, around the, the Marmara Sea. So we are not starting from scratch. Um, NORSA, together with the University of Alicante, we have developed an um, open source toolbox or tool for earthquake loss assessment since uh, 2004. We basically started in 2004 as a joint collaboration. And this tool is, is called Selena. You can download it for free from, from the internet. Um, you can enter the, the source code. We are providing it under the GNU public license as open source code. And um, there are numerous of these type of tools available. Um, many of these tools, which have started the development in, in the beginning of 2000, uh, the development have more or less stopped. So Selena is one of the few tools where we currently also, we, we, we constantly uh, implement new features and at least we have one release per year. So currently we are at version 6.6 .6 and uh, in December we are scheduled for version 7.0. And uh, as you can see here on this map, um, we have for an, for an open source development, so this means we don't earn any money on that. We only do that with our own engagement. We have a fairly good amount of users and, and applications uh, in worldwide, uh, mostly earthquake-affected regions. Oh, this is not nice, but anyway. Uh, the computation sequence of Selena when doing a, um, when doing a, a, a simple earthquake loss assessment is basically very simple. So at the end, at the beginning, you have basically an earthquake scenario uh, where you can simply identify, okay, I have a certain magnitude event in a certain distance of my, uh, my city that I want to investigate. And then with a certain ground motion prediction equations, you compute the shaking effects, the ground motion shake levels within the city, spatially distributed within the city. And then you combine this ground motion with the different vulnerabilities of your buildings and, and, and infrastructure assets you combine it with the inventory, how many of these buildings on, and infrastructures assets are basically prevalent and existing in the city, and thereby you compute damage. Damage is basically then also disaggregated into that you get a, a certain amount of buildings that are suffering slight damage under this earthquake, a certain amount of buildings will have moderate, severe, and a certain amount of buildings will probably collapse. And this damage results is basically the, the input when we combine it with the demography, so how many people are living in these buildings, and also and if we combine it with an economic model, how much are these buildings worth? What does it cost in order to reconstruct or repair these buildings? Then we can basically compute these what we call economic losses and human losses. Human losses basically then casualties, how many people are supposed to get injured or even get killed by the collapse and or uh, uh, significant damages of, of these buildings. So this is, this is existing. And this we take as the basis for developing uh, the liquefact tool. So this earthquake loss assessment can be done on various scales. You can do this for a single building. You can do it for an entire country, which often doesn't make sense because an earthquake doesn't affect a whole country at once. It always affects a certain region, let's say, yeah, a province or a share of a province, and sometimes only a, a certain city. So, of course, if you go into if you go into an individual asset, you reduce your uncertainties, and you have to basically be much more detailed. If you do it for an entire country, a province, you have to basically uh, make some 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 judgments in terms of that you accept that the uncertainties are higher, and that your detailedness, the level of detailedness, will be not as as much. So if we look at seismic ground motion, what we usually do in earthquake loss assessment is we only consider the shaking effects of the ground. And the shaking effects is basically the shaking effects, the ground motion input into the bedrock, amplified and modified by the soil amplification, the, the topmost soil layers, which the softer these soil layers are, the higher are the amplification, and the higher is probably also the damage. Well, in Selena, this is already taken care of. So soil amplification, basically due to the sedimentary 
uh, uh, surface layers, this is taken care of. That's not a new thing that, is, that we know since many decades. A new feature that we have implemented is topographic amplification. Topographic amplification is basically the amplification that was also probably part of the problem now what we, suffer, what we experienced in central Italy. The earthquake struck a hilly area. Lots of buildings were located at slopes or at ridges or at, at small hilltops. And these buildings received much higher ground motions because these ground motions were amplified by the geometric pattern of these hill, hill effects or these hill slopes. Yeah? Things like that is also a new feature. You don't find topographic amplification considered in many seismic building codes. There's basically only the Italian code, Euro code, handles it in a very, 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 very simplified manner, and the French code AFPS is handling this. No other code is talking about that. The same is probably true for uh, liquefaction. So ground displacements due to liquefaction is the third side effect that we want to, in this uh, software, implement uh, and, and handle. So if we uh, look at the, the scheme of earthquake loss assessment, including this earthquake-induced, uh, uh, liquefaction-induced uh, damages, it's basically that this uh, uh, liquefaction susceptibility is affecting or is affected by the geology, uh, the local site conditions. This is basically leading to the liquefaction susceptibility. Then we have a step where we have to identify the probability of liquefaction. How probable is it that a, a site that is really also liquefiable really will show that? Yeah? This is a combination with the seismic ground shaking. Because it's very low, limited low levels of ground sh shaking, there will be probably no liquefaction. Yeah? And then we also need to consider what is the liquefaction vulnerability of the buildings and, and infrastructure assets. That is a very key component of the whole project, which will be handled in other work packages. And then at the end, we have, and this we have to do in parallel, we cannot only consider to compute the damages that are induced by the liquefaction, we have to also see in parallel what is induced by the ground shaking. And at the end, we have to basically combine these different types of physical damages and then compute also the, with, with including the socioeconomic model, also compute these social and, and economic uh, losses that are uh, the outcome of this, and which will be actually more important than just to look at the damages. I want to just think about or, or go a little bit deeper into, into one of these um, input layers that will go in here, building stock and infrastructures. Why is this important? Many urban areas today are growing, and not only in Europe. If you look, for example, in most parts of the developing world, the urban areas are spreading, right? They're exploding. People are moving from the, from the countryside into the cities, and the cities expand. And the cities are mostly located either at large rivers or at coastlines which actually means that automatically, suddenly, these buildings spread over areas that are probably do not have the best soil conditions and are probably also liquefiable. And one very nice example for that is, I know it sounds boring because you have probably heard this example many times, Mexico City. But this time I would not want to mention the Mexico City soil amplification effect. I want to see illustrate you that Mexico City, at the beginning when the Aztecs in 1325 funded Mexico City, at that time it was a small village, it was on an island in a large lake in Mexico. And over the centuries when the Spaniards came, they've basically drained the, the, the lake and the Mexico City has spread out, out over these old lake beds. And the whole city is basically liquefiable. You have high level of ground uh, uh, um, um, water and you have former sedimentary soil conditions. So this is, for example, just an, this is just an example that is true for many other parts of the world. The other thing is all of us want to, want to live along rivers or coastlines. That's where the, the, it's, it's worse to live, right? But waterfront buildings, they're always close to water, which means high groundwater level along river bands, lakeshore, or coastlines. So this is also important to consider that which, which goes into this uh, inventory. So these are basically illustrating the layers uh, that we have to, to um, um, consider within the course of the project. So we have the geological conditions, we have groundwater depths which needs to be mapped, 
We have liquefaction susceptibility, which is basically decided on the soil conditions of the, of the topmost soil conditions underneath the surface. And then we have to compute also the ground shaking distribution, basically by assuming um, certain earthquake scenarios in a either deterministic or probabilistic way, and then create a reliable sh a, a ground shaking maps, both in amplitude, what is the level of PGA and spectral acceleration, what is the level of spectral displacements, and also in frequency content. And then combining this with the inventory, uh, we basically can compute the liquefaction-induced damage. And that should basically be uh, the core of this software. So this is how we, we foresee. This is just a concept of, of, of the software, how the graphical user interface shall be, where you can basically you input the seismic hazard model, the site conditions, the liquefaction susceptibility maps, building stock, ground shake and vulnerability, and so on and so on. Yeah? So easy to understand, probably in different languages, going along with a manual, going along with, with uh, online training courses, all these things that make a dissemination and a practical implication uh, for non-technical holders much more likely than it is without. So uh, I don't want to go into these details because many of these things have been also uh, um, 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 addressed before. So permanent ground displacement, this is basically uh, the reason for liquefaction induced damage. So here, this is basically lateral spreading uh, where we have horizontal uh, movements of the spectral displacements that are uh, permanent, that are uh, affecting buildings. Then we have ground settlements either in a homogeneous way where we have simply uh, uh, the sinking in of buildings in a homogeneous way, or that we have differential movements. These are basically all the pictures that you've be seen before, where differential movements basically lead to the, to the, I wouldn't say collapse, because these buildings, the structures are basically intact, but you cannot use them anymore because they have simply toppled. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, there are, of course, a number of studies, and we have already started with a, with a detailed um, 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 literature research. There are a number of studies, especially here from, from New Zealand, where people have uh, uh, addressed uh, liquefaction, but so far it has not been managed to bring liquefaction, the same like topographic amplification, into a software tool, to a software tool that can be used for mitigation purposes. Well, anyway, um, there are differences between um, um, the building response to ground shaking and the building response due to liquefaction. Liquefaction, we have heard this many times before, the key issue is the type of foundation. Type of foundation will also affect how the whole structure will affect. It will basically uh, um, have a strong impact on its performance under seismic sh shaking, and that is also uh, what we have to address in this, uh, in this building. So the combined uh, damage due to liquefaction and ground shaking, it is assumed that these both damages are decoupled, right? These are separate things, but for a holistic uh, damage and loss estimation, both extents of damage have to be combined uh, because we are not only interested in those damages. The municipality is, of course, interested in what was caused by liquefaction and what was caused by ground shaking, but at the end, it's the basic, the, the economic loss as a combination of both uh, factors that is, that is deciding. So this is basically um, the end. And I want to thank you uh, for listening, for showing interest. And uh, let me just again um, congratulate um, Angler Ruskin University for winning this project. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Horizon 2020 system. This is a very competitive uh, funding scheme, and people who win these projects, they really have done a, an amazing job. So I thank uh, Keith and, and uh, Angler Ruskin University for doing obviously a very good job. Thank you. Thank you.